All right, so now let's move on to part two of episode three, which would be 3.2, kind of like our 4.2 in our levels and divisions, but now we're 3.2 for the podcast. All right, I'm going to introduce Heather Toper, who is um, part of the conduct and compliance team. She focuses on compliance. And she is going to uh, outline for us some of the classes that are being taught by other members of the um, conduct and compliance department. And then specifically, there are some classes that she's involved in um, as well. So Heather, I'm just going to turn it over to you to uh, just talk about the classes that we can see at the conference from your department. Okay. Well, we are very excited to be teaching um, six different classes at the conference, and they are all geared toward um, different groups so that will be relatable to them and um, kind of bridge the gap in what conduct looks like and how it applies to me, whoever me may be. So um, the first set of classes that we have are on boundaries, and we have a couple different classes for that. We have one for coaches and owners, um, it's establishing and maintaining healthy coach-athlete relationships. So in the gym, you've got a business relationship with the parents. You've got a coaching relationship with the athletes. And then there's a power imbalance that happens amongst everything in the gym um, from an owner and coach perspective. And we want to provide instruction on how to build healthy boundaries, um, how to strengthen the relationship in building those healthy boundaries, and how to identify um, maybe whenever we don't have a healthy boundary and and how we would address that and move forward to, to have strengthened relationships in our programs. Yes. So, right. Right. So it's, it's the, it's maintain building boundaries, maintaining boundaries. And then what happens if, if you see, right, somebody that may have cross the boundary. So, yeah, so I think Absolutely. that I, I think that'll be helpful. I think that there's there's so much there's so many questions um and people truly want to understand what what the code of conduct and compliance means, right? What the minor athlete abuse prevention policies mean, why they're in place. And, and there really are a map and a guideline for um for boundaries. And, and, Absolutely. And how, how to navigate, how to manage and whatnot. And sometimes, so Glenda, this goes back to your person-centered um, learning styles, right? Somebody, people, they have a hard time reading it, right? They want somebody to tell them about it. They want to be able to ask questions. Um, and then I love love the fact that I, I believe that you guys are going to be using um, examples of things that, that have happened, maybe some um, situations that have come across in reports and, and, bringing those to applicable real life so coaches understand them more than in the theory of the words in the code. But here right. are some examples. Absolutely. And we, we've we tried to put that in, in many of the classes we're offering because we want it to be relatable. We want it to be interactive. You know, we have, we have a lot of reports and a lot of things are just maybe because people didn't know. And sitting down together, everybody interacting. What this is the report we have. What do we see? What do you what do we see is wrong here? What could have we chosen to do differently? And we want our classes to be interactive so that they mean something and they're meaningful for you to take back to the gym and apply it in the everyday operations of the gym because it's going to create all around a more healthy, therefore more successful program. Right. And culture. Right. All right. All right. On to some more classes. Okay. Um, aside from the boundary classes for coaches and owners, we're going to have one for athletes um, because having a healthy boundary with your coach is crucial to your personal development as, as an athlete. So it's the same type of thing just put towards um, what it means to the athlete. So what is a healthy boundary? What does it look like? How do we manage it? And what do we do whenever we've identified something that we might feel is not a healthy boundary? It's maybe cross the line. And what do we do now? So that's what that class will entail. And it's going to be great for the athletes because a lot of times they don't know that there should be boundaries. You know, if you're 
coach is talking to you about a fight with your her boyfriend, that's probably not the best topic of conversation. And we might want to know that, hey, this is not healthy for me and my development as an athlete, you know. Right. That's also interesting because we have a generation of athletes that have mm-hmm. grown up with easy ways to cross boundaries. Social media has right. made you know, has changed what's happened. And, you know, when my, when my kids were little, they weren't getting phones till they were 12 or 13, right? Now it is not uncommon for a seven-year-old to have a phone. And even, even with the 12 and 13 year olds now that have phones or the 10, 11 year olds, it's just such easy access and everybody gives out cell phone numbers and everybody does it. There's, there's just easier ways to cross boundaries. So the athletes need to understand from their standpoint this this should be a boundary. It may have never been a boundary before, but this should be a boundary. This is why it should be a boundary. And it's a boundary based on the situation, the relationship with the person and whatnot. So I think I think that'll be great for those athletes. Junior coaches, do you guys have anything for the junior coach track? We do have um, junior coach class. That one's called junior coach, not just a title, but a responsibility. And it's going to... Um, really talk about a lot of athlete safety because junior coaches, they're so excited to be a coach. They're a coach for the first time. They're definitely not thinking about the conduct and compliance side of that, right? So we're going to give them a basic foundational understanding of uh, what their responsibilities are um, in their position as a coach. So we're going to talk about um, identifying misconduct how to report it. Again, understanding and building healthy boundaries with their athletes. And they're also in an in-between spot there because they are junior coaches. So there is another boundary there with the other coaching staff. Your coach may be your coworker now. What does that mean? Um, we're also going to talk about understanding power imbalances, how to model positive behavior and how important it is because a lot of junior coaches, they're modeling whatever behavior ha- they've watched throughout the years. So we're going to talk a little bit about what pos- uh, modeling positive behavior means and how it will impact the success of their teams from beginning in junior coaching and carry on through their career. Right. Transitioning is hard. You know, when you, when you go from it, it and again, they're younger, right? They're, 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 they are younger and they're in this younger mind. They're still a minor, but they are in a position of authority over those athletes. They're coworkers, mm-hmm. right? Basically coworkers of sorts with adults, right. right? So they can't blur those lines because they're not equal. They're, they're not adults. And then this mm-hmm. also runs into that whole idea when you transition from an athlete to a coach, from you were a minor athlete, now you're no longer a minor, but you actually are coaching and then transitioning into that new role. It's hard. It's hard. So an age plays into it. And, and even the coaches need to understand, you know, the young coaches need to understand their new roles. And I know you guys are doing a, um, a, a class for uh, adult coaches that are attending on the code of conduct and compliance, right? Yes. That one um, is called um, Calling All Owners, um, <laughs> Keeping Up With the Code. So in in that class, um, it's going to be more geared towards owners, but owners and coaches can come. It's going to be um, to help you gain the knowledge and tools to put policies into your club that are a requirement for your membership. And we're also going to break down the code of conduct and compliance in that class. We're going to talk about your obligations for addressing and responding to allegations should they ever come up. And a great thing about that class is this year, um, owners are required a mandatory training for um, understanding the code. So, so this class will check that box off, right? So, so, so they will fulfill the requirement whenever they take that class. Yes. All right. Yeah. So what you might not have picked up from what Heather just was talking about is there is a requirement this year that all owners must take a training on the code and implementing what is required in your club. If you attend this session, this session will meet that requirement. We are then going to create this course and make it digital for our owners to take. Uh, and it'll be available, I believe we're shooting for September 1st. So just as a, a side note, right, for anybody that's paying attention, 
that's listening that might not be coming to the conference, we will, this course will also be required for owners at a later time. All right, Heather, so let's talk about, I know there's two kind of practical application sessions that you guys are going to be doing that we are, we will have a, um, well, one of them is, is you and Dan are working together on the one, um, you know, mm -hmm. is it, and I don't know the name of it. So we'll pretend, you know, is it bullying or is it tough coaching? It's kind of that line it, between because I mean, I do know, right. Our number one, probably, and I don't know if it's our number one, but we do get reports on bullying, correct. From coaches, from absolutely. coaches while they're coaching. Absolutely. And this, this class I'm probably most excited for it's, um, where's the line tough coaching versus emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. And you are exactly right. We get a lot of reports. My coach was mean to me. My coach is yelling at me, belittling me, all, all the things that that we don't want to do for our athletes. But what is the difference? Right. People want to know where is that line? So we're going to make this class interactive and that we're going to give actual reports, um, obviously not with names or anything like that, of um, instances that happened where did it go wrong? What's wrong with it? Is it wrong? Is what is is this crossing the line, this report? Because sometimes they aren't. However, how a person talks to their athletes creates the culture of that team. And does that athlete think I can? I can do anything. I'm ready to go out on that floor and attack, man. I am confident. I'm ready to go. I am 10 foot tall, bulletproof. Understanding the difference between emotional abuse and tough coaching, that's going to get that athlete there. Because if you cross that line and you're an emotional abuse and that kid feels terrible about themselves all the time, you're never going to have the success you want for, for your team, for yourself and for, and for um, your club. So I'm really excited about that one. <laughs> yeah. And, right. Well, and, and I think that that course is going to be great for that to understand it. And then if coaches want to be able to um, maybe learn some more about changing their direction, their coaching style, the way we're doing it, we do have um, a, a facilitator from the positive coaching Alliance coming. And she is um, her, I believe the session that we're having her do is uh, coaching with empathy. So it, it, it is um, actually, it's funny because it was a course that somebody else had suggested at some, at one point, and it was actually on their list of, of courses, but they, the coach that suggested it didn't get it from looking at, at PCA. They were saying we need coaches who have empathy, right? You need to coach and, and work with kids and what's the best way to get it, get things out of them. So that'll be a good course kind of to piggyback, you know, mm -hmm. on that. All right. And then there is, um, there is one more course out of your department that we are doing um, with Shay. And so Shay was episode two of the podcast. So Shay Crawford is uh, coming to do some tumbling courses. Uh, Justin Miller is also coming to do tumbling courses. They'll be doing some together. But Shay um, Crawford is going to do a class on spotting tumbling. Yes. So he's going to do a yes, class so on spotting tumbling. But you're going, you guys are going to interject in there? Yes. We're absolutely going to interject. We're going to talk about, obviously, appropriate spotting, appropriate language when spotting, appropriate touching when spotting. Um, and, and Shay will be there for that. But in, from us, we want to talk about how to not cross the line into inappropriate touching that you, you might not even think of as an appropriate touching, but might make someone uncomfortable or how you speak to that athlete. Um, is it more appropriate to tell them to squeeze their glutes or squeeze their butt? And we don't want to poke their butt whenever they are, whenever we're telling them to squeeze it. So we're just going to be bringing to light things that might happen in a day to day that you don't even think about that could make someone uncomfortable and how to, you know, not do those. And then also responding to what happens whenever for the child's safety, you have to spot them catch them in some manner that might feel uncomfortable for them. What do you do? There's a, there's an action plan of what to do there. You want to 
not hide from it and pretend it didn't happen. You want to address it, address it with the parents, make sure that it's that it's um, addressed with the club so that everybody knows the most important thing is the athlete safety. We have to protect their heads. We have to protect their necks. Sometimes, sometimes you have to grab a kid, but you have to also take the actionable steps afterwards to address it. And, and we'll go over those type of things. Yeah, I think I think the, the bringing things to light, the the practical applications. I think so many people have um, people are just scared nowadays. They're just they're yeah. just scared. You know, everybody tries to do the right thing, but you're scared. And something mm-hmm. that could be interpreted a certain way could be seen as as inappropriate. You have to look at the whole picture and the circumstances around it um, in doing it. Absolutely. Yeah as you said, protecting the head and neck of, of the athlete is the most important. Shane, I talked about that this morning in episode two uh, in, in the conversation. So there's that. All right. So then I know, Heather, that you are actually going to be doing a core, doing co-teaching something with um, our Northeast regional director. I am. I am. Is she by chance? Hello, Robin. Oh, there she is. She is Hi, right Robin. Here. <laughs> Hi, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> You're Hi. Right. <laughs> All right. Hi. So Robin has um Robin's got some courses, some classes or sessions she's teaching uh as well at the conference, but we'll start with this one that Heather and Robin are doing together, where it is turning passion to professionalism. Been there, done that. So do you want to give us a little bit of an overview of that that class, Robin? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um so this is kind of a spin-off, if you will, of my absolute favorite class that I love to teach every single year, um, the Coach's Quest. So we're kind of taking that in a different direction with this turning passion to professionalism. Been there, done that. Between the two of us, um, Heather and I met about 25 years ago, have been there, done that through all of it. Coaching, ownership, now in positions professionally within All Star. Um, So this class in particular to me revolves around people finding themselves acting out of a place of passion without thought. Mm-hmm. We are incredibly passionate people, um, both of us, and have are quick to, to share our passion in a variety of ways. <laughs> and in the course of 25 years, we certainly have learned a few oops. Maybe that wasn't the best way to handle that. Mm-hmm. Um, so this class is really talking about the fact that Passion just happens and it doesn't always, it's not always perceived by others, your co-coaches, your club owner, the parents of your athletes, the athletes themselves, judges, people at events, et cetera. It's not always perceived in the way in which you meant it. Do you want to tell a fun little side story of, of how we met? Sure. This is this is our passion to professionalism moment when Robin was 19. Go ahead. Um, And I owned a gym across town and we were at an event at a local high school because it was a long time ago and that's how things were then. Um, No big stage, just a high school and some bleachers. And up comes this very, very excited girl. And she said, hi, I'm Robin. I want to work for you. In her warm up from the, I was coaching another team. Correct. (laughs) <laughs> and I was just so passionate about how awesome the program she owned was that I found it completely appropriate to go running up to her in my best moment of being 19 years old, so excited, wearing somebody else's <laughs> warm-up suit, coaching the, the kids. They're back, they're like on deck. And all I wanted to do was find out how I could um, coach for her instead. <laughs> so that might have may not have been my best shining moment. Um, and just through the course of our, our careers, separately and together, Mm-hmm. Coaching, owning owning a gym together, coaching together, um, and now working in different capacities, but for the same organization together. I just feel like having Heather in on this mm-hmm. class now it is really a great real life example of been there, done that. And and how did it come across? It came across not how she wanted because I thought, wow. Look at this coach in somebody else's uniform that's here right now asking me for a job. And she got lucky because I had to fire somebody. <laughs> and it was like two weeks before our next national golf day. Um, <laughs> but so just touching touching on all those touch points, whether it's how what you're saying to your athletes in practice, what you're saying to the parents in a parent meeting, 
good, bad, or indifferent, how's it coming? How is it coming across? And kind of the lessons we've learned over the years. Um, also drawing from experiences people have shared at national conferences in past, mm -hmm. sharing some of these topics in the previous Coaches Quest class. Like there's just a lot of so many different examples. So this is a really, really interactive, introspective self assessment, if you will, learning to look at your behaviors that are always meant with the best of intentions and decide, is this what's best for my athletes, for how I want to portray myself? Am I demonstrating my true role model and leadership qualities? Here's a great example. When you're at an event and your kids do not have their best run, it is not their finest moment and it is certainly not what you're expecting and not what you train so many hours in the gym for. Well, how's that make you feel? Sometimes you might internalize that and make you feel embarrassed as if this is about you. It's not about you. And we need to be able to take a step back and realize that the children who are coming off a of floor potentially in tears, they've disappointed you. They've disappointed themselves in their mind. They are trying to perform for their team, themselves, their coaches, their parents, and everybody else out there. There's so many different components that they, the athletes want to please. At no point do kids go out on a floor and intentionally make a mistake. And it took me, both of us really, right, many years to understand mm -hmm. that they didn't wake up. They didn't wake up that morning with the intention to not do well. So they, they're crushed. So how is it that we respond in that moment? You're disappointed. The kids are equally disappointed, more disappointed, really. Mm -hmm. And how do you address it in that moment? Oftentimes, we don't take the pause we need. And we say something out of a place of passion that our intention is meant to be uplifting. You're you're better than that. We we work too hard for this. You All these different things. But sometimes we need to take a step back and realize, how is that coming across if the parents are listening to it? So I just think examples like that are incredibly important. All righty, Robin. So now there's, there's still two classes on the schedule that we need to give everybody a preview for. Would you go ahead and talk about those? So in Jumpstart Your Journey, it is intended for club owners who've been in business one to three years approximately, or, or those who feel like they might need some, some help sustaining and growing their business. So it's really meant to be a class to give you all of the resources that the USASF offers to give you all of our best suggestions, tips, tricks, and advice on how to make sure that you're set up correctly, how to make sure that as a new business owner, you're utilizing all of the resources available to you. And we're going to have our awesome connection leaders as part of this class. Connection leaders have been um, around for quite some time. They're gym owners and coaches just like you, and they volunteer their time to, to help newer programs get off the ground and achieve success. So this is a great opportunity to come pick their minds. We're going to be showing you all of the resources and all of our strategies to make sure you're set up for success in the long run. All right. So we've got that class for um, newer to uh, all-star that jumpstart for like one to three years, one to four years. So what do we have for those gym owners that have been in business a little bit longer? So on the opposite side of things, and there's not really a time frame per se put around this. This would be a class for someone who feels like they've reached the top, they've reached their goal, whatever that looked like when they started, whether it was seven years ago, 15 years ago, or anywhere in between. This is going to be a class that focuses on, okay, so you, you had this momentum, you made it to the top. Now what? Where do you go from here? Um, you know, looking back to your journey, how did you get there? Did you end up where you wanted to be? And if the answer is yes, what happens next? For some people, it's just sustaining it. It's I've, I've accomplished what I wanted to, and I just want to be able to sustain this. For other people, it presents questions of what's next for my business. So for owners, owners who coach, for example, coach all the teams in the gym and they own it too, because they don't like to trust others. They don't want to let go of coaching. What does that conversation look like? Is it time to maybe take a step back and focus just on owning your business and letting others coach? Sometimes it's super helpful for owners who are starting to feel some burnout, but aren't ready to be done. Um, so we're going to have some different connection leaders in the room who can talk to those specific things. So the owner who coaches so much, what does that look like? Making the choice to maybe step back from somebody who did so, 
What did it feel like? And what happened to the program? Did it grow? Was it successful for them? Sometimes you get to a point where maybe you might be thinking of selling. Maybe you might be thinking of merging. What does that look like? Some people get to a certain point of their all-star career and then they decide, I want to branch out with a new business idea that kind of fits my model, whether that be into things like parkour or really focusing on birthday parties and and other revenue streams. What does that process look like? And can you do that while still maintaining the level of what you've worked so hard to get to with All-Star? So there's a whole lot of different directions because no two people are the same. So this class is really geared for those who have been an All-Star long enough that have the need for this, what's next? Where do I go here? I've, I've accomplished it. Now what? And there's actually so many of those people that are still running incredibly successful gyms, but are feeling this, do I just stay with what I'm doing? Do I take a step back? Do I add something more? So this is a really great hands-on opportunity to discuss those things with people who have been in similar situations to talk about options and what has worked for some and maybe what hasn't worked for others. So it's really just a class to focus on what happens once we got there. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's great. And I love the fact that we're utilizing our connection leaders who have real life experiences, who've been in their shoes in those situations, you know, to help them through it and talk through it. So, all right. So we are done with episode three and episode 3.2. Um, we are going to, uh, I, you know, if I were a normal podcast, like, subscribe, get your notifications, but this is only going to last for like the rest of this week and live in per- perpetuity on the internet so people can make fun of me about the name of the, the podcast, but we'll be fine. So that's an end to um, episode three. Thank you guys for joining me and thank you for anybody and everybody who stayed and listened through the entire podcast. All right, we'll see you on the next one.